Hey guys, welcome to the second part in the Nottingham Forest series, and this is then the season review of 2046-2047. Uh, uh, now, a um, thing you might notice straight away is we're safe. I've actually done quite well. Well, I've managed to move them away, shall we say, from the relegation zone. Um, I did consider doing a sort of February review, but I just felt what's the point? Two months on, it it just then it just didn't feel productive. So. Um, here's the end of the season we're in june just about to go into the new season and i think uh, i've done okay uh we're as you can see 12th we had the chance at one point to maybe finish in the top 10 top half if you will but you know at the end of the day they the board said to me look we want you to finish uh away from the relegation zone as far away from it as you can I don't think we've done too badly. Um, so the best goal difference of the teams around us, if you will, with the exception maybe of Southampton, but then obviously once you... No, it's not Southampton, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, yeah, Southampton. But once obviously you get there, you're getting into the top half then with likes of Millwall, Aston Villa and Liverpool. So, yeah, I don't think we've actually done too badly at all. Um, looking at the rest of the league, we've got Tottenham back on top again. They've won it, uh, which is fair enough. You know, they're, they're a very good team. Um, I don't know why, how on earth they've suddenly become as great as they have. They've had a phenomenal decade. Uh, they've been really, really good. Um, I think just some great signings. I think they. I, it's not been FM12. Remember when in FM12 they got took over by the Iranians? It hasn't happened there, but they've obviously had something. Um, and yeah, I think the rest of the league is how you wear Exeter crew and Huddersfield getting relegated. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I don't really think I have anything else to uh, to show you. So we'll just go over the signings and transfers and stuff real quick so now obviously I've got a few players coming in for next season but as you can see a load of players I got rid of just obviously either raise money or just get rid of you know just cut the tr just trim the fat basically you know to just say right look I've, I've got all these players on wages these can go you know all the kid, you know, kids for example you know they all need to go um, I'll just go over the ones with fees and stuff I can't arrange them unfortunately um Actually, I, I can't even remember half of these plays. So I've let loads of young kids go on loan, but you can get an idea looking at the names here. Most of these were either too young, not good enough, sent out on loan, or were just on too high a wage. Uh, you know, and you know, I was able to raise like the odd million there. You know, there's like Eduardo going, there's a guy called Provenzano going, uh, Carl Taylor going there, and you know, I managed to raise nearly eight million pounds, which was decent on top of the I think like six or seven million. We got. I mean, bear in mind, Forest came up from the Championship, so obviously they got you know a decent you know budget out of that. Um, now, all these players from about here. So basically, the players I brought in were all from Nigel French downwards. He was already here. So all these players were already here when I uh, when I arrived. So obviously, I realised there were maybe one or two players uh, who you know you're looking at. Hang on, <laughs> you've sold them straight away. I'll well, we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, yeah, well, I guess actually I should point out the first one. Carl Taylor here, what the hell happened? <laughs> I brought him in, and he's gone to Exeter straight away. If you look here, 9th of the 6th, um, 9th of the 1st. Yeah, he's pretty much gone. He is crap. <laughs> Managed to make a profit on him, I don't know. I don't know why I brought him in, to be honest. He was right. That was just a mistake. Um, Steve uh, Doherty's coming in. He'll be uh, coming in from for the summer, uh, but the rest of these are all going to be summer signings. So the main three signings I managed to make uh, were Maxim, Maxim, is it Maxim? Yeah, Maxim A. De Jonga, who was a uh, he's thirty four now. He's going on a little bit, but a good experience left back. Uh, played against him many times when I was at Dortmund against uh, Schalke, and got to manage to get him on loan. Good little player. Adds a lot of, um, you know, has a bit of protection at the back there. Wally Cousins from Newcastle. Now I uh, knew I recognised this guy's name, and he's pretty decent. And the reason I did was because he started off at Arsenal. He came through my uh, academy when I was at Arsenal in my last season there. Uh, I thought this guy looks pretty good, but he's never really. I mean, apart from that one season he's had here at Bromby, he's never really had a consistent season in like ten years, which is a real shame because he had good potential at this kid. And as you can see there, Carl Taylor didn't last very long at all as you can see his stats really aren't that great he has one half decent stat well i guess a few half decent stats he got strength jumping his stamina is okay his work rate decent but if you look at the technically technical that is really poor <laughs> but i managed to make it um at a slight profit on him and yeah there's some uh, players to come in later on 
these are all going to be coming in for next season. So yeah, they're, they're just uh, small uh, numbers of players that I managed to build on. So uh, I think we started then with the game against Arsenal. That is right, Vaughan Redhead scoring. So I love that name, man. It's amazing. Um, so the first game then after that was against Man City, and we unbelievably got a 3-3 draw at Man City Stadium. I don't know how we did this. Uh, well, I do know how we did this. Uh, we were 3-0 down as well. This was something, honestly, I I've had comebacks in my time, but this may just be very well be one of the best. Um, yeah, as you can see, we got pretty much dominated. Well, the whole first half was pretty much all us. Uh, sorry, for, was all City. I was like, well, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> Why not? You know, because we're either going to get taunted 5 or 6 nil, and that's just going to kill all the morale that, you know, we've managed to get up from the Arsenal game. So I thought, well, I might as well, I'd rather lose 5 nil fighting, going down fighting, as opposed to, you know, losing 5 nil going down with a whimper. So I just sort of settled the place to go up by. Not the best goalkeeping there, no, but in fairness, that was a, a quality goal there from Martinez. Uh, but this is the first free kick. This was a free kick. Um, I gave them 10 minutes, and you know, the City sort of weren't as offensive as the first one. So I thought, right, okay, maybe we can go attacking. So I moved the, the strategy to attacking. I, moved, I, pushed the, uh, I pushed them up a little bit and you know, pushed higher up, and I think I, I changed one or two tactics. So, but one thing I've had to do with this formation, if you do download my tactic, um, I'd recommend only with the bigger teams. Uh, th that you keep it as as it is. If you're going a smaller team like this, don't make them push as far as higher up because um, they're just going to get caught out. They really are. And I think someone's already told me to do that in the Celtic saving, which obviously I, I totally forgot. But a nice finish there from French. That was 3 2. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, we can do this. So it came to this in the end here. Obviously, you know, we're going for it at this point. City are panicking. Nice little ball here from Moen. Beach. He's been a great little player and well, a slightly lucky finish there. But Oliver Lualua on loan, I think, from Tottenham. Dramatic equaliser. Oh, I couldn't believe this one. Unbelievable. Uh, where are we then? But then, unfortunately, we did lose. Uh, Campbell did score, but unfortunately, Eddie Burns scored an own goal as we went down to once Newcastle in um, my second home game. But then we managed to get our act together after that. That was a bit of a kick up the arse they needed. As we went to, uh, to the Amex, or the, not the Amex, sorry, the Ward Browse Arena. <laughs> James Ward Browse, man. Fucking hell. As French and Beach got us uh, two goals, which beat Brighton. So, yeah, I've managed to go back to Brighton again and, and beat them. Jason Burns then, unfortunately, missing for Brighton. I realise, obviously, now a lot of names you probably don't know because, you know, it's constantly changing. It's all different. Uh, there's a D Cameron in goal <laughs> as well uh, for for right now. Obviously, there's still a few players. You know, there's Salvini, there's Jeffries. He's a good player. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, Curtis Beach with another late goal, uh, which gave us the victory in Brighton. So I was really happy with this. I mean, bear in mind, you know, if you are new to the series or whatever, Brighton are no pushovers. You know, they're not just some team that have been promoted. I mean, I would recommend you go watch my whole Brighton videos. Firstly, you know, I did turn them into a you know, it's a respectable power in the Premier League. You know, they're not okay, they're not quite City, they're not quite Chelsea, but you know, they are still a good team. Slightly lucky there for French there, but you know, that's a sign of a good strike, you know, good finish. Uh he will probably do quite well, I think, for um for uh, where is he from? United I think he was from. I think it was Man United. He should be I'm not sure if he'll be a star, but he'll certainly be probably sort of Danny Welbeck if he was a bit better. <laughs> Because I, I mean, I've always maintained before. I don't think Danny Welbeck's a particularly good. Player. Well, he, he's a, he, he's look. He's, he, I think Welbeck's a distinctly average player who gets way more hype than he is. Look, I'm, I'm not. You can feel free to carry on the debate if you want, but uh, slightly lucky here for French. But he still does quite well. You know, he's been backed into a certain little sort of hole there, and he had to do quite well. But a lovely well in by Eduardo and Beach with uh, the winning goal. So I was uh, very happy again. But yeah, you know, that's just. A terrible comparison because I mean, you know I know a lot of Man United fans get very really defensive when I talk about Tony Welbeck. You know, I don't think he's all that great. I mean I think he is overhyped a bit, and he's still obviously he's got he's got to have something about him. But clearly you know he's not showing it at the moment. Uh, Curtis Beach off the bench again. This guy seems to be the uh, the main man at the moment. He is the main striker. He's off the bench to give us a victory at Huddersfield. We then have a two two draw, a very respectable two two draw at Zola Arena against Chelsea with French. Uh, scoring again on loan as I say uh, and uh, a Savio own goal I'll show you this as you can see we went up in the 11th minute and it took the, and actually were two no we went sorry it was 1-1-2-1-2-2 one, one, two, one, two, two. Uh, close game um, 
it's kind of a shame that Bill White only had a 6.6 .6. if he was a little bit better there maybe we could have held on and got the victory but as you can see you know it was, it was pretty much what you could describe almost as, as nearly a smash and grab because of, you know if you saw our shots I think we had like 5 shots Chelsea had maybe 15 I mean you can see the space of the game uh, I'm not sure if I'd actually changed the tactic at this point to you know it says where's the defensive line you know it says there's if you go into the tactic and you go into the sliders of course it does say you know push higher up default or normal or I think it's drop deep but I don't, I don't really use that or see the point of it personally I'm a very attacking manager you know I, I like to, well, what's the objective of the fucking game score goals so you know I don't generally don't drop deep I don't see the point of it but this is uh, this is the own goal here <laughs> Phil Neville-esque <laughs> um, very nice finish for an own goal at least <laughs> And I was hoping we could hold on, but nah, there was too much to ask here. Poor, uh, poor play. Savio does make up, I guess, being involved in that. But a very lucky deflection, you've got to admit. That was unlucky. But, I don't know, a ball does seem to break for the bigger clubs. <laughs> Thank God, support Chelsea or something there. Uh, we then played uh, Halifax 3-1. We actually went 1-0 down against Halifax Town here, who are currently in the Blue Square Bet Premier. Uh, so they've risen uh, to there since uh 2042 so they're not as bad as you know they once were up currently obviously halifax town as you can see from 2008 so they're not you know one of the uh the most well-known clubs but we managed to beat them three one nevertheless played a few young players here um guy sheridan look out for this guy um no literally guy <laughs> four and a half stars please that jang young men is the new england under 21 captain Oh dear, yeah, <laughs> he's English, him. <laughs> Not that I have anything against that, it's just, uh, yeah, good English name. Um, <laughs> uh, multiculturalism, I'm not for it. Right, um, 4 1 Swansea here, uh, Juan Pedro, Redhead, and French and Mohan all scoring and give us a good victory over Swansea. This was a pleasant surprise, a nice away win, but you know, it was, it was like you look at this run here, with the exception of the 3 2 victory over Exeter maybe a nil nil against Liverpool you know that that's what sent them down but ever since then we have kept most of the losses to a minimum with the exception of obviously the Charlton and I think all the damage was done here this is why the manager can never recover you know apart from losing 2-1 to Newcastle which you know was inevitably going to happen we've actually started to do quite well here and you know naturally we, we start to bounce up the table a bit French scoring two again and there's Stephen Connor a good player centre midfield um, scoring again for to give us the victory against Villa we then played Huddersfield again, this time in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Played a load of young players, 3-3, three, three, uh, Johans Palmer, Martin Moen, and uh, this guy, you may remember him, Barod Chivalek. Uh, he's not very good at all, actually. He uh, was at Arsenal. Um, I really didn't know what to do, and then eventually sold him to Aston Villa for £2 million. He was a terrible player. I uh, don't think he's very good, and I hate the fact that he's still <laughs> that he's here, and I've got to deal with him again. Um, but this was absolutely zany as hell. Uh, obviously you can look at the times there and you can get an idea but we'll, we'll play this now completely in full and well not in full obviously but you know highlight wise and we'll see this was the Jonga's first game I think or the Jonga I don't know if the J is silent he's German I think so I would say it's not silent uh, but as you can see there you know they scored in the 90th minute and I thought well we are out of the FA Cup uh, but no as you saw there 95th minute winner I mean look at that 90th minute that's where the 90th minute is how far away it is from full time uh, but yeah crazy man absolutely mental do and a half get some crazy late winners or at least late goals lovely goal there from Palmer really really nice finish well he's fully deserved that goal for the effort it's 39 minutes <laughs> Wally Cousins also played in this first game Jonathan Doyle a player I do want to well, I'm trying to get rid of at the moment he, his wages are seriously high for what he is he's not even that great but a nice goal there uh, really really nice goal you know twisting and turning and the play is very uh, I, I love to see that more often you know, when a player just, you know, not necessarily sort of Ronaldo step overs or anything like that but you know a, a sort of I don't know it looks really nice on the 2D classic view you know when they sort of twist in and out like that you know run rings around plays literally but a nice goal here sort of <laughs> um, that's what I get for playing my backup goalkeeper I really shouldn't play the bad I, 
yeah, I'm learning the lesson now. I'm not playing my backup goalkeepers anymore. I mean, unless you've got someone like Constantin Pantelimon, whoever he's called, um, and that was a fight back from Huddersfield. I was super pissed off. And then 90th minute, they get a penalty. I thought, well, that's our misery complete. But no, we managed to get out. I think we put it on over. I think I put it on overload. Terrible header from Cousins. But honestly, that's one of the very few bad things he actually did. This Boyle's a good play. He's quite nippy. I remember him standing out. Uh, but a slight look at break here but Chivalek but it actually just crept in there can you believe that despite their disadvantage I think was there a red card or was there an injury so yeah there was an injury uh, yeah Minaha injured 87th minute that's what was the gut and think about it next game then unfortunately we lost to champions then elect I suppose champions elect Tottenham 4-2 although we did score two goals Campbell and Beach did score against them which wasn't too bad but you can only do so much against this very very good Tottenham team um, you know this Pivilavski is a good player I've seen him for Anthony Power plus Ali playing for Tottenham even though he's a former Arsenal player um, yeah this what's he called Pivilavski Piv yeah Pivilavski um, scoring against us here good player okay, he's running around Billy Wilson also playing for Tottenham Obviously, the boy from Dortmund, Owen McHugh's there as well. God, what's he doing there? Um, yeah, can I do so much really there? That was that was a bit of a, bit of a crap game. One one against Millwall, not too bad, I suppose. You know, considering where they were, Curtis Beach again scoring very very good. We then managed to beat uh, Huddersfield three one uh, in the FA Cup replay. You know, went to the Gal Farm there and won. Mercos, the uh, number nine, who does not deserve to wear the number nine shirt at all. He's terrible. Uh, Sheridan scoring. I think that may have been his first goal. I'll show you his goal. Very handy little player, this guy. But Martin Moen also scoring there. Sean Boyle missing a penalty. I've just praised him. <laughs> uh, boy, he was, uh, as you can see, that, that was a bit of a jinx, I suppose. They clearly didn't have as many shots on target as I was. That kind of probably led to the victory, really. Yeah, you know, same uh, amount of shots, but lovely pass there. And Sheridan very composed for a 19. I think he was, might have been 18 at that time. Uh, lovely goal. To so throw another draw this time against Blackburn, a good Blackburn team. Rick has, hate fucking saying these names, man. Rick Rick Vyashvili, there you go. Rick <laughs> Rick Vyashvili and uh, Mayor Costa, who's starting to come good now. Obviously filling in for Beach when he didn't perform. Grab grabbed us a goal. Uh, you know, point again, a precious point at this stage was always really good. You know, we're starting to move on up the table. Unfortunately, then we went out of the FA Cup. It was doable as well because we're playing Wigan at the City Ground. Probably should have won. Juan Pedro uh, did score a header, but it wasn't enough in the end. Vaughan Redhead came on, did not have the impact I wanted them to do. And we uh, crashed out, really. It was winnable as well because we got through there. You're in the quarterfinals, and it's like, well, maybe there's something to cling on to. Like Wigan did, like, literally there. Uh, you know, like Wigan did in the season, just gone. You know, they. they you know, okay, yeah, they got relegated, but they had this nice side distraction of the FA Cup, and it would have been nice for us to do that. We beat Cardiff uh, two one. French and Sheridan scoring. This was when Guy Sheridan really started to, you know, come in the team and flex his muscles and actually say, you know what, I deserve a place in this team. And he he looks a good little player, this guy coming through the youth. Uh, two one against Exeter. I was kind of annoyed that we you know, didn't win this, or um, or at least you know. I guess, well, yeah, 86 minute winner, that kind of says it all, really. I was going to say, you know, more convincingly, but at the end of the day, it wins a win when you're at the bottom of the table. But, you know, I was kind of annoyed that, you know, it took us to the 86th minute to get us get us the winner. Well, I'm not going to complain. Not the best header away there from the player. Cousins, oh, I thought that was the goal then. I was going to say, I've actually forgotten the goal, of course, they're down there, of course. Um, we're extra, you know, they got relegated in the end. Um, it's amazing that Exeter are even in the Premier League. I was hoping for them to get promoted for years because they were, they've been in the Championship for all, all the 30s. Connor just tiptoeing his way through into the box. Lovely goal. And then this was pretty much straight away here. This is the equaliser. Christofferson, literally the next highlight, literally the next thing straight away. You, you stop celebrating and then all of a sudden you're level. But this was the uh, this is the goal, 86 minute winner. French ball across, headed away, comes out to Burns here. Walla Walla, it's a good talent, comes to Moen, no one on him, takes it down, nice finish, 2-1, game over, three points. Uh, then played Liverpool, lost unfortunately at Wallace Stadium, a um, bit of a kick in the teeth this one, as I thought, you know, maybe we could have, you know, Liverpool were there for the taking, they're not all that great anymore, they keep chopping and changing the managers like Chelsea and Blackburn, um, 
and it's incredibly annoying. But they've got some good players. They've got some really good players. I mean, you can look at the names. I mean, there's Jamie King. I mean, you remember him. Mark Rocket is there. I remember him from Dortmund. Mark Crapes is there. Dortmund have literally just sold every one of my players. I don't know why, but the self destruct. I've, I've talked about how stupid, and I mean mind bogging, boggingly stupid. I think I've said that wrong, but whatever. Bogging. That doesn't sound right. You know what I mean? Yeah, impossibly stupid the CPU is when it comes to managing players and managing uh, the team. And it just says it all here. I mean, look at that Jamie King, you know, European Golden Boy winner in the 30s. Uh, at Arsenal, you know, he was going to be like the next captain of Arsenal. I thought, obviously, I got sacked. He, you know, was at the world at his feet and then they sold him for like 15 million to Liverpool. Crapez, great player at Dortmund, sold him. Rocket, great potential, sold him. Kevin Woods, great potential. Arsenal sold him. Um, and I was really annoyed when I saw this. I was like, why are they selling all my players? It's so frustrating. But we managed to get two goals at the end of the day. You know, we were 2 0 down. Nearly brought it back, but they were able to to two two, but whatever. You know, I I, I was I was going to accept that we're going to beat some defeats here. Uh, two two against Crew probably should have won this. Another point to safety, I guess. Um, this was then the most bizarre, strange. Excuse me, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, strangest defeat. Uh, oh, sorry, Victor. One of the maddest ones I've ever had. Three nil at Old Trafford. If we look at the league, yeah, Manu on all that great but still come on 3-0 yeah bear in mind they're attending 76,000 that's about what they get at the moment I think I think what, what is the current attendance it's about between 80 and 90,000 in it but bear in mind Old Trafford now if we look here at the uh, facilities is 100,000 Real Madrid's new stadium is also um, is 120,000 so I think that may top the new camp but this is by far the maddest result I've ever I've had. Um, there's Ryan Fry, traitorous bastard, <laughs> playing for uh, Man United. Now I knew he wasn't going to. Uh, I knew he wasn't a loyal person. Um, but this is just unbelievable. This is when everyone just fell into place, and it sort of backs me up again, saying, "You know what? I, d I don't claim to be great at this game, but you know what? I think I've made a good tactic here. I think. <laughs> uh, nice goal there from Beach." 1-0 up, I couldn't believe me look. And then, right, this is literally the start of the second half. Bear in mind, there's no team talks or anything. Campbell just nips in there ahead of Nava, and it's 2-0 in the blink of an eye. I just couldn't believe it. Wally Cousins has been an absolute revelation in midfield. Really, really good player. Very impressed with what I've seen from him. It is again a thick of the action. You can't keep him out of it. Mercos, um, I've, I've criticised him before, but he does rise to the occasion occasionally. He does have occasion occasionally that doesn't make any sense does it uh, well nice goal there from Campbell really good team goal just ripped apart Man United I can't believe it uh, but then you know it's like well we could beat Man United 3-0 but we do draw 2-2 with Southampton you know Boric there Milan Boric off the bench he's a good little player Croatian centre midfielder uh, good player good shot on him uh, West Brom 2-0 unfortunately another loss you know, so we are quite inconsistent at this point but I think from about here it was that Man United victory pretty much gave us I think at that point I knew we were going to be safe it was all about them finishing as high as possible 4-2 uh, against Charlton Curtis Beach grabbing himself a hat-trick um, we then managed to beat Arsenal 2-1 Connor and Beach with the goals I'll show you this like, again we, you know, we're actually managing to to beat the big boys with the exception okay maybe with Liverpool but you know, maybe you couldn't count them as a big boy anymore since they are falling away a bit now falling out well then again I'm not being funny the team seems the teams in the top four or five um, change every year virtually you know Tottenham have just come in now all of a sudden and break, broken down the walls and you know they've replaced Liverpool Brighton fall away then City fall away then United fall away it's all over the place you know, they're all rotating, but you know Arsenal certainly are now one of the big boys. You know, since I've laid the groundwork for this team, I did ten years ago. Don't even say I didn't because I did. Um, and yeah, lovely header there from Beach. He's got a good header on him, hasn't he? It really has. Then this is uh, the second one. No challenge at all, and a nice, well, a little slight break there for Stephen Connor. And no one wants to see the Arsenal goal, do you? <laughs> Uh, and I couldn't believe him. Two 0 and that was definite safety. Then two two against Newcastle. Campbell scoring twice. I think I may have instant resulted this. I think I did actually instant result of this one against City. I didn't really care at this point. Um, I couldn't be bothered playing City. Sorry, <laughs> I do want. You know, I do want. I don't tell you which one to do to obviously stop people complaining. But 
a Wilhelm Hans up and say instant result of that one. Uh, but then lost to Brighton, unfortunately. Loa Loa put through. Uh, was that? Oh, sorry, now that missing a penalty, sorry. But Beach did score again. He's keeping up his record. And then that was maybe even an instant result of that one because of the last game of the season. Now, obviously, we could have got another six points here and that could have maybe even pushed us up to 10th if we you know, had scored a few goals. Um, and you know, actually finished strongly. We could have definitely finished in the top 10, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But still, 12th is very respectable considering when I joined. Now, if we go here... Uh, I joined, I think it was about there. Yeah, I want to say maybe, oh no, maybe about there. Maybe, I think it was about here. Actually, no, surely we were there. I don't actually know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as you can see, basically, you can see the rise, basically. The genuine and relative guide to safety in the end. So, stats wise, let's have a look at the Premier League. Uh, Curtis Beach didn't actually finish in the top, uh, however many of this is, but as you can see, you know, it was a very high standard there. Rick, uh, <laughs> Rick Weiss really there with two red cards. Um, French, though, did get 12 assists, which is very good for an on-loan player. Manuel Postiga, there, as you can see, finishing top for Liverpool. There's, uh, there's a... <laughs> Imagine if I said, hey, Exeter, you're going to have a player called Zidane. Why? What I love is, though, his name does not even... It's, I think his name has a Z in it. There's Gregory Mikel Dalosto. How the fuck has that got anything to do with Zidane? <laughs> it's like these players, man. You can just take any name you want. But yeah, that's a superb name. I might have to buy him. Um, you can get an idea of who the big players are at the moment. Obviously, this Billy Yavsky, or whatever he's called, is um, obviously a top player for Tottenham. He does look to be the big one. Uh, but this is how uh, things stand. So it's pretty much, with the exception of City, who seems to just sneak in every few years, uh, it's it was, you know crashed the North London party so to speak. This decade, the forties have all been about the uh, about North London, with Arsenal and Tottenham grabbing most of the uh, titles there. Look at that Man United the first. Look at that. I forgot to say look at that two thousand thirty nine actually managed managed to win a title for the first time in fifteen years. Wow. As you can see, Brighton have never won it since I've left, which is a damn shame. But whatever. <laughs> uh, then we have that. I guess I should probably show you Spain. Uh, Bar uh, Barcelona there, finishing three points ahead of Real Madrid, as you were. France, you won't believe France. Check this out. Okay, they've already started their new season. This is ridiculous. Since almost 20 years, every year, have Lyon won the title. And Paris Saint-Germain, apart from two, have finished runners-up in them. Pathetic. <laughs> Absolutely Pathetic. Uh, obviously, lost Lille have nearly come in, but th this is why I have no intention of going to France at the moment. What a pointless fucking league. What I wanted to see, you know, I activated it anyway just to see what it was like, and yeah, I think I might on to activate this one soon because it's kind of pointless. Um, but I think that's going to do it for me then, so uh, I'm going to go off and maybe buy, get some more new signings and um, see how we do. So I'll report back then in the future with uh, in later in the season and see how we've done so i'm hopeful but obviously we're gonna have to make sure i get some good signings in otherwise this team will just amount to nothing so uh, otherwise you know it, it, there is the possibility that it can just descend into medio mediocrity and then you're just stuck in a rut and you don't really know what to do and your reputation dies with you so thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye